All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good morning, everybody. Jake Chapman, Jeffrey Birchfield, my man, Kenneth Delap, my man, Judy. Love seeing you guys. Sorry, it took me a second uh, because my fragile female brain couldn't figure out how to run Savon's Lamborghini of a stream yard right now. <laughs> so I was trying to work out all this in my head. But uh, we got Pool Boy. I want to make sure we had a dude on the podcast so that Sevon feels comfortable. There's there's a penis on the podcast. So we're good to go on that. Uh, do you want to verify? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we do that. <laughs> I did want to say, since, since it's Sevon's DEI hire show, uh, I wanted to go through our list of uh, our DEI requirements. I feel like I fill most of them. <laughs> Uh, babe, I think you lose. I think you only have two. I do. Uh, I do. It's just lesbian and female. Yeah. And we can't verify. So, but we're right. just going to say it. <laughs> uh, what, what are your DEI qualifications, Mr. Mike? Um, I'm Mexican for sure. Um, that's all you got, some man. May, some oh. may think I'm, I'm gay, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, other, other than that. Oh, um, you guys found out that I'm friends with uh, a technically illegal immigrant, so I guess that counts. Oh, <laughs> I, I got every. That show or not. Uh, yeah, I did. That he was great. Where'd you meet him? Where'd you Where'd you meet him? Um, it's a great question. The, oh, so I I have always like known of him because he he lives like basically forty minutes from me, and uh, I'd always run into him at we have this pretty decently big competition here called the NorCal Classic. And I'd always see him there and kind of run into him there. And it wasn't until the third one where I finally introduced myself to him and said hi, because his uh, he goes to the gym that he goes to. Um, I'm good friends with the owner um, of the gym. So that's finally introduced myself. And from there, we just became really close friends. Uh, that's cool. That was, yeah, that was a great episode. I thoroughly enjoyed that episode. Uh, I kind of wanted to throw this out real quick just to the chat and to you. I, I always like to nerd out on Savon's like, uh, ecosystem, his podcast ecosystem, and all the branches that stem from the, from the Savon podcast. And then yesterday, I was really, I was thinking, what about like the friends? How many friends can you say that you've made just through the seven podcast. Like I can rattle off like six people right now that I could call, talk to like real friends. So you want to hear a really, a really funny story about that? Well, yeah. it's kind of funny story. I forget when this happened, but I started watching the show um, somewhat religiously. And uh, cause I was always uh, a pretty big fan of Savon back when he worked at uh, CrossFit, and I'd always follow his uh, podcast there. I just thought they were just hilarious, and some of the shit that he would say um, just would crack me up, especially the ones with, like, Dan, Dan Bailey, where he kept inter interrogating him about going on The Bachelor and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, so I started watching the show um, once it started getting, you know, more and more traction, and one day... I got a notification on my phone that I was added to a um, to a certain group chat, and it's a group chat full of everyone who watches the show. And I was like, "Holy shit! These people! This is a cult! Holy crap! This is like Scientology 2.0." Everyone <laughs> the uh, Savant podcast. They're probably gonna give me shit because I mentioned it on here, but whatever. Well, they're giving you shit about your headphones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are obnoxiously big, aren't they? Yeah. Well, well you're breaking up a little bit. Did you want to try without your headphones to see if it's better? You're kind of breaking up as you're talking. Sure. Am I having a, a John Young moment? Is that what's happening? That <laughs> um, was at the barbell spin. He was off. Or maybe it's your Pat. Good morning, Pat. All right. Is that better? Yes. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yep. yep. Um. I, I. So should we start at the top? Do we need to start all over? No, no, no. I don't think so. No, no, you're good. no. no you're it's good. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would be um, a Savon, true Savon podcast without something um, without happening. something going on with the volume or whatever. Still, one of your favorite ones to date is um, 
the one episode that he was on by himself trying to figure out how yeah. to work the microphones and then it cutting oh, yeah. out. I can spend I can spend 20 minutes pretending to connect a phone to a roadcaster if you guys want. <laughs> 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 that was that was like an hour show of him just not being not having sound and then being like fuck and like freaking oh, out. Hold on, hold on, call her, call her, hold on. Yep, call her, yep. hold on. And then hold the hands on, go up. Hold on, hold yep. on. Wouldn't be a Savant show if the phone was disconnected. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm probably gonna do it too because again, my female brain can't handle it. So I'll do the same thing if anybody wants to call. But feel free to call, guys, if you want to. Um, hey, did we mess with you this morning? Did where did we mess up your training? Or I know you're getting ready for quarterfinals, right? No, Sundays are usually a chill day for me. The only thing, the only thing messed up is my. Uh, I woke up at six a.m. here. It's like it's like uh, I'm in, I'm over here in Cali. I'm only about forty minutes, forty minute drive from actually where Savon lives. Um, so we're pretty close. But other than that, no, I'm fine. Uh, where are you? What like? I see you started with being on teams, right? I was, I literally was not nervous until like Haley Matosian DM me last night and then I got freakishly nervous. So <laughs> yeah, that's, I wasn't scared of Savon. I wasn't scared of Souza, but I was definitely, as soon as Haley messaged me, I was like, oh my God, I, I started to freak out a little bit. But uh, I wanted to start, you started on teams. You were on teams. Did you go to... Did you go to quarters or semis or on teams or is it just like Wadapalooza? You did a lot of. So I've been I've been doing CrossFit for damn near since 2012, so a very long time, almost 12 years. So I kind of went through all the phases of of the growth of the sport um, in terms of the Open back in when it was still. I think that when I joined, they had something called man, what was it? Sectionals or something? Yeah, yeah, um, something like that. And then um, and then eventually regionals. And I made it, um, I qualified on a team at the, at the time I was competing under, um, Craig Howard's gym, Diablo CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah. And we had, uh, that year, I think we sent two teams, two teams to the regionals, which was really cool. So back when it was in, uh, Del Mar and that was the very last year that they had regionals. So I was very, um, grateful and thankful for that opportunity to go. Um, I was on a team with a gentleman named Troy Stinson, uh, Natalie Talbert, who competed last year at semis as an individual. And then many people here in the chat might know the fourth female, Kelly Clark, who's now known as Kelly oh, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, So went there and then um, flash forward to last year, I had this really unique opportunity where I had just been let, uh, let go of a, of a job where I was at coaching. And um, I had this weird limbo phase where the open was like literally three weeks away. I think even less than that. And um, I had no idea where I was going to do the open. Um, I had recruited, literally recruited a team um, to be a part of the gym that I was previously at. So that was no longer an option. And um, I had a mutual friend reach out to me and, and she was like, hey, I have a, a, a female friend who's looking for a fourth teammate would you be interested in joining her team and be like yeah sure and she was like well the only caveat is it's in boston you would have to move all the way to uh across the country and i was like oh. stars literally lined up i was uh, i was like well i don't have um, a steady income and she was like okay uh well she's gonna she'll offer you a coaching job there and i was like okay cool and then um i was like okay now the only issue is i don't have a car and to basically drive myself around. And I forget how I even got connected, but there was a random gym in that area. Um, I think the city called Chelsea, which is like literally 10 minutes outside of Boston. Some coach there randomly was like, hey, if you coach at my gym, I'll offer you my second car to drive around. So literally like the stars couldn't have lined up better. So I was like, all right, fuck it. Two weeks um, notice, I booked a flight to Boston and went over there and keep in mind these three individuals were complete strangers to me. I had no idea who they were. I never met them in my life. And oh, I ended, wow. Yeah, I ended up meeting my male teammate at the airport when he picked me up. And uh, I ended up living and staying on his couch for four or five months that I was there. And it was it was, it was was pretty incredible. Literally went from, who had no idea who these people were, complete strangers to like, I look at them as brothers and sisters now. It was amazing. Uh, Kenneth, he said Boston. I don't know why I can't pull these up right now, but yeah, he said Boston. 
Boston. Boston. <laughs> um, so what was it, how long did it take for like the team chemistry to get to get rolling? Did you did they know each other? Yeah, they knew them. They knew each other. Um, I just was the 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 stranger of the bunch. And uh, I mean, those who know me, I have a pretty um, extroverted personality, so it doesn't take much for me to, you know, weasel my way into a friend group or or you know not be shy about certain situations. So it, yeah, didn't, really you... it didn't really take much at all, and we gelled so smoothly. And um, yeah, shoot, man, we had such a good time. We ended up almost making top ten um, at semis, so that was a pretty cool experience. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you met us by offering us a thruple. So, I mean, yeah. You don't <laughs> oh, yeah, really, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess that's how we know that that Mike's cool. Well, yeah. I mean, all good. Yeah. What did, uh, did you have your girlfriend at the time when you were no, on? No, no. I, I just started dating her uh, this last November. Oh, how, how does she feel? Because you now you're going individual, right? So I mean, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But realistically, like I know I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm a pretty good athlete. But to go from I think where I'm at right now is like top 150 all the way to top 40. Like, it's a long shot. What was your girlfriend say? Is she cool with like all the time it takes and the Dude, she's just she's like the female version of me. She's she's the oh, same. Oh, you guys just trained together. She, she um, uh, I mean, she so she lives um, she's she's a marine. She's in the military, oh. and uh, she actually we're doing the long distance thing. She lives in in Oceanside, basically San Diego, which is like six hours south from me. So we're just doing uh, the long distance thing. Um, but whenever she does come up to visit, like yeah, we we train together. I'll obviously she has her own programming, and I have mine. Um, but I'll try to jump in some of her workouts just to help support her, um, a bit. She actually, I just follow, um, just a normal template programming. Um, I don't have a coach or anything like that. Um, she has a coach. She works with golden line training. Oh, okay. uh, so her following her program is a little bit more important than me following just a standard template. Um, so whenever I can, I'll just jump in the workouts with her. Are you guys super competitive? Is there a lot of trash talking and no, no, nothing like that. No, oh, that's no fun. Yeah, I know. It really isn't. No. <laughs> How long if were we... you on a team for? Uh, team. Uh, well, I mean, we did uh, back in when I was in Diablo. The plan was to try to keep that team together, um, but the following year, everything just you know changed. I want to say that's when CrossFit went through all the crazy um, changes. They changed to like sanctionals. Um, super teams were allowed. So once that was all announced, it kind of just fizzled out. And then, um, last year with my team in, in, in Boston, we did discuss potentially keeping it together and, and trying to go another year, but this time maybe them coming over to the West coast. Mm -hmm. Um, cause you know, no disrespect to the, to the West over here, but they suck compared to the East. And I learned that, um, I learned that hard last year. Uh, the East is far more competitive um, outside of like the top five or six teams and outside of the top 10 individuals here, it, it doesn't even compare to the East. Uh, like there were, there were teams, for example, that I was watching last year that there were teams that couldn't even do rope climbs. There were teams that had athletes yeah. that can do muscle ups. I'm like, dude, this is a fucking joke. And they were competing in the same sanctionals with you? You were saying no. So like I, I, comp I last year, the East semi was the very first semi. So we were we went first mm -hmm. um, and then the West was the following week. So I got to literally see them do the same workouts that we did. OK. And I was just like, holy shit, dude, people can't climb ropes like they're. Yeah. They do a ring. There's a team there that couldn't do ring muscle ups. It was just, it's ridiculous. So we had talked about keeping that team together to come potentially over to the West because it's a far more easier route to go to the games. But it ended up just not working out. And do you miss the team? Do you miss being on a team now that you're individual and you're training individual? Is there something that you miss about that? Or are you I do. Like realistically speaking, like I'm 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 pretty I'm much a realist. Like I understand my best shot at any attempt to go in the games is through a team. Mm -hmm. Um so I do I do miss that. I especially I got a lot of friends here in the area that ended up putting teams together and just, you know, seeing them train and, and, and go through quarters right now, it, it gives me a little bit of that, uh, that FOMO. Like I miss, I miss that camaraderie, uh, last year, but, um, I'm not, I'm not tripping too much. There's always, you know, next year, 
my girlfriend and I had planned on 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 trying to do something in terms of putting a team together. So, yeah. Hey, did she go with you to the open announcement? No, no, she did not. She did not. So she wasn't here um, at that time. She she is now deployed in Australia. So she was um, overseas in in Australia, but she definitely had huge. FOMO. FOMO. How was that? Was that, did you nerd out the whole time? Did you meet Dave? Did, I saw you in the, this live stream. I was like, there he is. So, so many people give me shit for that because they were like, dude, you planned that. You planned that. I'm like, dude, honestly, I did not plan it. I, I walked in there and, um, like, I know, I know people at that gym because that gym again is only like 30 minutes for me. Um, but I literally just hung out with, Craig Howard and his his homies, the owner of Diablo, yeah. and they just happened to just stay right there. So I stayed right there, and then boom, the camera happened to be like, um, I'm right there, so it was perfect. But no, I, I didn't really nerd out because um, I, I know Dave. I've known Dave prior. Um, I actually did games testing for Dave uh, a few years back. Um, his ranch is just about another like 30 or 40 minutes south from me. Um, so I've known Dave for a while. Oh, wow. Um, Actual games events? Yeah, yeah. So like a team, I, I ended up testing, ended up testing one event for some online competition that CrossFit randomly threw. And then when it came to the games for the teams, um, I tested a few events with um, Kelly, Allison Scuds, and then um, another gentleman, I forget his name. Oh, that's Damn. Okay. That's crazy. Well, High no, level. well hold on. You have to explain that I, a little bit. Yeah, Bring us like, yeah. What event was it? <laughs> what, Bring us into yeah. what games training yeah, what year? Looks, testing looks like. I'm trying to remember what event it was. Um, it involved that big Bob sled where like all four of us are like pushing the sled. And then the event had like bar muscle ups, pota bars or something like that. Um, that was, Dude, man, I'm getting old. I was like, I want to say like two years ago, two years ago or so. It was, it was right before Dave got fired. I am fangirling about all of this right now. I don't yeah. even know how to tell you any other thing. I like, and literally, and I'll let you get back to this in a second, but I know Sevan likes me because he forgot everything about me altogether. He forgot my name when Jethro called. He forgot my wife's name called called her what did he call you terry terry or trish or like, something yeah he, he called you my girlfriend too and i've been married to you for like 12 years yep. he like he for, totally forgot who i am in every way shape or form and i was just like oh he likes me he, he likes me so <laughs> that's hilarious i am fangirling like for this entire freaking show right now but go ahead i'm sorry dave dave what's funny is dave did something similar to that uh to me so prior um prior to me actually meeting i don't know if i met him yet but prior to me doing testing for him um i does he had just done, dm you does he just dm you how does he get a, even get a hold of you no so that so that was through uh kelly my friend kelly um she's got a, a really solid relationship with crossfit hq right now i, I want to say she's interning to be on the seminar staff or something like that but she was doing testing for for dave and dave had mentioned that he wanted one more athlete for um for team uh, uh testing and and she brought my name up she contacted me and she was like hey would how interested would you be in in doing some games testing for dave i'm like you fucking kidding me like hell yeah and that's how that's how we ended up getting um connected but what's funny is i met him for the first time when i did that um and then similar he couldn't remember my name so there was a uh, flash forward to another instant uh time where um crossfit wanted me to do a uh, photo shoot for them i don't know if you guys if you guys go on the like games website right now i'm on the uh workout two thumbnail for the teams yeah uh, and that was from a photo shoot that i did but dave couldn't remember my name and he wanted me wanted me to go in and do that so he said um so he was talking to like adrian bosman and bosman told me this story and he was like hey how about we get that um that ripped mexican dude and oh, so yeah, I from, tried from, to get him shirtless. I did. I really did. I asked him like two days ago <laughs> if I could get him shirtless. And uh, yeah, I tried. I really did. I, I was I was looking out. Yeah. So so when I went and did that photo shoot, they kept calling me RMD. 
RMD. And finally I asked him, like, dude, what the hell's RMD? And he was, and he told me the story about how Dave couldn't remember my name. So he called me the ripped Mexican dude. So now I have a, a second nickname and it's just RMD. You didn't make that a, a Instagram handle. That is a no, I, mean, no. I love pool boy. When, <laughs> when I walk around and tell people they're like, who are you talking to? I'm like pool boy. And you're a lesbian. You have a friend named pool. Boy. Yes. And he's hot. And yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. when you when you do those events and you test them, um, has there have you ever noticed that there was like a big change after that where Dave was like, oh, we need to change this, we need to change this, or is it literally like the final step before it's time for the games athletes to do it? No, like we didn't. He didn't. I want I want to say when I tested it versus watching it live on the games do it. I don't think he really changed much to be honest. Um, but it is a fascinating process to watch him do it or watch him go through it. He literally has a notepad. He doesn't really say anything to you during the event, but every time like the other athletes would, would be doing their part and I was like chilling, resting, I would just look over and I would just see him constantly writing things down, constantly writing things down, looking at a stopwatch, writing something down. So that process was really fascinating to, to watch just to see his brain just like go and just how he kind of, goes through the process of testing it's pretty crazy yeah and i feel like that they gave us i forget which um documentary it was but when they kind of allowed us to go into his little um training area or where he writes all of the stuff and you can kind of see he's got no uh you know post-its everywhere he's got notepads everywhere he's got mm -hmm. all of these things and i think that that's just a testament to his craft so just was always curious if in person was the same as like him doing it by himself after you're done with the event, did he ever come up to you and say anything about or like ask questions? You know, how did this section feel? How did this feel? Um, would you change? Like, does he get any feedback? Does he ask for feedback or no? Oh, uh, yeah. He asked for, for some feedback, but honestly, not, not too much. Um, how many times? Oh, go ahead. No, finish, finish. I mean, just especially with the team stuff. You know, it, it didn't seem like you really uh, asked much. Mm-hmm. How, how many versions of... Oh, Kenneth, I have my CEO no, shirt No, he was talking too. about me. And I oh, was like, I was like, I have my CEO shirt on too. We vindicated <laughs> out for this. Like, I put the banner behind me. We got, got it. We support. We know who we're supposed I to I mean, do. I have the Hiller flag over there too. Like, we vindicated out for today. So, yeah. um, how... How many did, did you test different versions of the same workout? Did he ever do that? Was he like, hey, run no. back? Oh, no. it, was, it was pretty simple. We just went through it and it wasn't, it wasn't too deep. Even the second time I went and did testing for him, it was pretty straightforward and simple, but like talking to Kelly, for example, man, she told me that like there was one specific workout. I don't know if the chat remembers it, but um, it was the games workout where it was just like power snatching and echo bike cows. It was just a sprint through. And she said she did like four or five different variations of it. And she was just dying. It was not. Did you, did you ever read his book? No, but I've been meaning to. I'm not much of a reader, to be honest, but but I, I do want to want to read his book. I, I read his book and I it looks like what you were just talking about. It just looks like his like his notepad would look if he was writing out what like it's just time of day, what yeah. he did, what he was thinking. I just imagine that's what he's doing when he's writing the. He's writing. Yeah, I would imagine he's super detailed with that stuff. He probably even writes down like whether his shit that morning was solid, liquidy. He probably goes through it all. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Switching gears. <laughs> we'll get off the CrossFit for right now because he oh, just reminded man. how much ridiculous crap we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. But we have you guys ever met Dave though? Have you ever met Dave? No. No. Oh, dude, he's the nicest dude in the world. It's insane. So, like, even at the uh, live announcement, um, because you know, I could, I could tell my girlfriend was like, "Oh, let's see. Uh oh, who's this? Uh -oh. I don't know. Hold on, caller. Hold on, caller. I gotta figure out how to do this again. Oh, oh. very okay. stuff on us. Yeah, there we go. Are you there? Hello. No. Yo, what's up? What's up? Who we got? What's going on? What the fuck's going on? Where's Kevin? Oh, it's Jethro. Hey. What's up, Jet? <laughs> My man. What's cracking? I have no idea where Sub is. Making, I'm making sure the uh, the phone works. Come on. Oh, you, you always do. Yeah. You always do. You always check on us and make sure we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I have no is idea. There gonna be, uh, final, is there going to be final four talk uh, today or uh, is that for another time? 
uh, Final Four men's because I haven't paid any attention to them at all. I've only been paying attention to the the women's drama. It's very sexist of you. I know. I know. I'm just saying. I'm very misogynistic. Nice. Well yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm calling call to say hi. I'm off to Home Depot. I gotta get some stuff in the gym. So, uh, Mike, have fun, ladies. Enjoy. Thank you. Thanks, Jet. We call love it. you. Love you, Jet. Love you too. Bye. 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 Oh my gosh, he's so cool. He's so funny. He's such I a cool thought guy. I recognized the number, but I wasn't sure. Um, That's funny. <laughs> but going back to you know you saying, you know, meeting Dave and you see him for just the cool guy that he is i feel like that is true for everybody in crossfit you know what i mean like you hear the stories about like um it was what Savon and hiller being like the most misogynistic or toxic and you hear all these negative things and whatever but when you meet them like we've met hiller i've never we've never met Savon in person but you've obviously talked to him a lot um they're just really cool guys and I think that people get lost in the whole criticism of what they choose to speak on and share online versus like that in real life, that it's not the same person and they can have opinions too. So I always love hearing like oh, how people meet. Um, I almost missed life. this for real vindicate. When I met Dave for the first time, he said he can't be associated with me since I work with Savon and Hiller. Oh, damn. He was joking. He's okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> that's tough. Yeah. Messing with but, me. But yeah, I mean, they're literally the nicest people in the world. And, and it's like, people are always, at least there's some people that are kind of shocked when I tell them that because at least more in the older days, like Dave would come across as a, I don't know what the right word is, but he would come across like kind of like a dick, I guess during the announcements and, and stuff, just like that persona, he would kind of, um, kind of put on a little bit. Uh, but I mean, the dude is one of the most humble, nicest guys you'll ever meet. Like what I, when I was saying earlier is like my, my girlfriend, for example, is, has major FOMO with the open coming up, um, at the time and being in a completely different country, completely different environment. I asked Dave at the announcement, if he could make a video for her, just, um, trying to encourage her and cheer her up. So he literally just took my phone and 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 did like a 30 second video um, oh, that's just to cool. like make her feel better. Right. And it's just the kind of guy that he is. And then um, same thing, even with with people like Hiller and, and Savon, I met Hiller for the first time finally last year at semis um, in Orlando. And, and same thing. The guy is just so nice um, and, cr and willing to have a conversation with anyone. Um, and then I finally met Savon last year. Um, September at the NorCal Classic. Ooh, how was, tall is he really? How tall wait, is he wait, really? Wait, hold we keep on. trying to find this out. We keep asking everybody <laughs> yeah. we can. Like, where? What's he? Uh, is, how tall are you? And where does he come? Like, does so he? I'm not very tall either. I'm about like five seven, and he came up to like my belly button, something like that. Oh, okay. Sure. I like it for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> you're in, somewhere in the middle of where Hiller told us, and your belly button. So that's yeah, awesome. think like Danny DeVito <sighs> and. Elijah Wood, somewhere around. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> he said Elijah Wood. Yeah. yeah, that's the Hobbit kid, right? That's the yeah, kid. yeah. I got yeah. it right. I got it right. Yeah. Oh, man. I think your girl's in the chat. Is she? She should be asleep. It's midnight, right? Is it Julia? Uh, is that who it is? Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, she's here. She says I can't hi. See what she's... <laughs> <I'm listening>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I told him I wouldn't wake up, but here I am setting an alarm just to say hi. <laughs> yeah, see, she's so sweet. I love you, hon. <laughs> That's awesome. When's she coming back? Is it like a year or? No, 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 thank God. Nothing like that. She'll be back around the end of August, just in time for my birthday. Oh, cool. There you go. You guys do anything special? Going to, well, hopefully you're going to be. Oh, I'm going to go pick her. I'm going to go pick her up from the airport. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we almost got to the ridiculous stuff that we were talking about yesterday, but uh, we got into talking about Diddy a little bit. I'm um, no. You said, I'm gonna you said you said titties. Is that what you said? Uh, I no. no. <laughs> Diddy. But I mean, Diddy. we you can talk oh. about titties if you want. But <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, but yeah, Savon always likes to tell me that I have to have. I can't just have uh immediate outrage i have to find um some sort of proof of said allegations 
But I always love it when these people tell on themselves. So like, just like, uh, what was his name? Uh, R. Kelly, he like made songs about it. So this is, this is Diddy's song about, conf he confesses in my mind. Let's see what you think. At first we were friends, then became lovers. You was more than my girl, we was like brothers. All night we were fight undercover. Now you're grown, can't love you like I really wanna. Now you're grown, I can't love you like I really wanna. Dude, you know, you know what's so funny is I literally, I literally brought that song up to someone after all this stuff came out, and I was like, you know, I always thought it was weird that he used that line talking about a girl I I loved you like I love my brother. Yeah, something. I was gonna ask yes. any of the I men. I would never describe my girl. Right. Okay. <laughs> cool. I was gonna ask any of the men what? out there if they have ever described their girlfriend, wife, whatever you loved her like you were brothers. Hey, but that song's a banger, though. It is it a banger. It is. Isn't that so frustrating? Is that all the good songs are created by these fucking people? Dude, I don't give a fuck. So, like, I'll still listen to R. Kelly. Fucking bump and grind. I'm not <laughs> telling me no. And it's like, you know what, motherfuckers? Until you stop listening to Beat It and Billie Jean. Yeah, it's true. I'm just going to keep rocking the R. Kelly. And, mm -hmm. and all that other stuff, because it's just whatever. I don't give a fuck. All right, I'm doing what Savon asked and having more men on the show. So, oh, shit. What up, cool boy? Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, wait a minute, why are there only three of us up here? We're I don't know. Y'all kicked me out. I'm good. I'm not happy. <laughs> I don't know. Look, I'll just go through all of his like backgrounds. I, I don't know how. I feel, I feel like the other one is like the fucking Brady Bunch introduction. I know. I just, I don't, he's got like, there we go. Oh, I hi found guys. it. I found <laughs> it. Yeah, nice job. <laughs> um, Julia, things. Julia confesses that you listen to gay country. Oh, I do. I do love gay country. So I, I, I'm not a country fan at all. Like I hate country, but there's a certain artist named Dixon Dallas who brings country back to its roots, which is gay as fuck. I love the name. <laughs> I love the name Dixon Dallas. Yeah. It's, it's hands down the greatest country artist you'll ever hear in your life. Uh, Hiller, what up? I had to ask you in when you did that video on yourself squatting and doing thrusters, <laughs> where is he going? I don't know. He left, that's it. He was like, Oh, damn. <laughs> oh can you take your shirt? I'm pouring myself really some want somebody to have no shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here you go. Here, here you go, Heidi. I don't know where Heidi went. That's but better. If you're here, there's somebody shirtless on the show right now. There we go. See how easy that is? You ever do you know how to take your shirt off the most efficient way possible? That's it. Uh, just the one hand. That, like the one okay. sleeve, and then you just go around. Uh, no, I know how. Everybody to... try it out. It's oh, no. there we go. oh geez, Heidi, wherever you went, <laughs> Heidi, Let's go. you better come back right now. All Let's right, go. Uh, yeah, when you did the when you did the video on your thrusters, did you know you were gonna go there with it? Where your hip crease wasn't. Below, like, did you know you're gonna end up roasting yourself when you saw the video, or were you just watching the video like, oh shit? Hey, dude, I'll tell you what. I was at Chief Nation. I had the judge. I know, like, my my shtick, right? Um, yeah. I knew I was bouncing my butt off my calves on all those reps, and I also knew my heels were in stand contact with the ground. So when I saw the one angle, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and then when I saw the footage you took, and I go, okay, all right, it's not that, it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I didn't even know what I was doing when I when I got down because I got down on the ground to try to get a different angle and I didn't want to be in anybody's way who was filming behind me either because I knew they wanted to film you too. So I just didn't even realize what I was doing when I, and when you started talking about hey, I'm not below parallel. I was like, is he? I thought you were the entire time and we were sitting there watching you. I know everyone in the gym probably thought so too, right? Or someone should have said something. That's that's what. That's the idea. Someone should say something. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm surprised Jet didn't, though. He very much is the guy that goes around and is like, right. fixed his. I mean, that was one of the things that I loved about him, just being a coach myself, is watching him go to each person and be like, no, straight arms, like above, you know, above the body and making sure that every chest to bar, whether it was jumping chest to bar or regular chest to bar pull ups, like you're touching and like making sure that he's going over to everybody. Maybe he just didn't want to. Interrupt your workout and <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> he was I don't probably too do amazed either. at what the fuck he was looking at. He was like, "Are you squatting on your toes? What are you doing?" I, I mean, he was on his toes. <laughs> Way it keeps you upright, you know. Yeah, 
because Alexis <laughs> was next to me and she's like, he's on his fucking toes. And I and then I looked and I was like, oh yeah, he's on his toes. And but then when you saw it in the video, I was like, oh yeah, he's really, really fucking on his toes. <laughs> I'm working on one of those components of fitness balance. There you go. Coordination, yeah. right? It's like a balance beam on your toes. What was uh, you just did the Matt Fraser video? I did. That's a nice artwork you've got in the background. Oh yeah, it's all the Matt. That's uh, way from way back. The Matt Fraser uh, and Sevon right in the middle. Yeah, and I got Sevon right. right in the middle. Yeah, Don't feel cool. jealous though, Hiller, because your flag is over here. Yeah, you I'm not have jealous. Flag right jealous. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, inspiration for that? That was you want to tell us about it? I don't want to make any. Please, like, dude, ask any question you want. Uh, inspiration for the video? He hasn't said anything in a long time, right? Yeah, then he comes uh, out and does. When's the last time you saw Fraser on a podcast? Haven't. Yeah, not at all. And, and honestly, I just sit there and I'll watch it. And like as I'm watching those sorts of things, it'll go, eh, that doesn't seem right. Or, oh, I like that. I haven't heard that in a long time. And honestly, the best parts of the Fraser podcast was the stuff where he was talking about CrossFit. So I don't know if you watched it, but in the beginning, Brian goes, you know, we're not going to talk to you about CrossFit. And I'm like, what the hell do you mean? Like this is this is the greatest CrossFit male of all time, outside of Froning, of course. Right. How are you going to say that? Like, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> and then yeah. Patrick Clark at some point brought it back to CrossFit. So I, I just have like these thoughts, and that's what my videos are. There's my thoughts as I watch the video. That was it. Was fun. I liked the podcast. I thought it was pretty cool. I wanted to the hear original? about it. The original. Yeah, the original. Um, I thought, I thought listening, hearing about his kid was pretty cool, but yeah, I, I, you want, he hasn't spoken in forever and you want to hear about CrossFit and his thoughts on CrossFit. And then he doesn't have any thoughts on CrossFit. It's, it was like, I think what, yeah. On Matt Frazier, not having thoughts on CrossFit. Well, no, just the original, the one that Brian did. The interview with him. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Why? Does anybody even, can I be honest? obviously yeah i i i mean i love brian he's he's a good dude i love what he does but i just i just can't watch his interviews they're just boring did anybody even know that that frazier was on that podcast i just happened to be scrolling and that video happened to be live at the time or it came up at the time and otherwise i would have never found it uh i knew it was happening for quite some time i was kind of looking forward to it because i hadn't heard fraser talking a bit Oh, pool boy, Julia would like you to rotate your phone so she can see your entire body because she knows. <laughs> Is that better? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Our Got nation. lots. Yeah. Can't see your are, face. Are you guys in different rooms in the same house? No, we're literally sitting across from each other. Oh. It's, it's how, just, do you, how do you get the audio to not bounce back and forth? Oh, it's just turning off the audio. The audio just runs through the roadcaster. Oh, okay. okay. We had so much trouble trying to figure that out in the beginning, but yeah, now it just runs through the roadcaster. So it's. We tried to do the open, the Taylor Self versus the world, all in the same room with Sevon. Th the third week, I think it was. And uh, it was impossible. Maybe it was the second week, wherever he was going against Hopper. Second. Oh, the se yeah, second, second week. Yeah. It was impossible. The noise would bounce all over the place. Sevon tweaks out. Is anyone here that go? <laughs> is there an echo? <laughs> uh, Poopoy left. Poopoy, is that a birdcage behind you? It I is. No. Okay. He'll be back. I want. I don't want you to see my uh, my porn pyramid. Oh, this porn stash. Is that what I heard? Did he say I don't want you to see my porn stash? Yeah. Julia, you allow that? What is happening right now? DVD. Oh, I guess you're gone. <laughs> um. Hey, who you got for for this one, this quarterfinals one? Who do I uh, who do I got? Yeah, between the Taylor Self versus the World. I'm pretty excited for this one. Colton was in the mix, and I I, I choose Colton. Colton's a freak right now. Uh, have you seen? Uh, well, no, not. But are you going to be there when they do it? I'm going to be hanging with Bill Leahy. Well, that's your boy. Quarterfinals, yeah. Are you documenting his quarterfinals? I will be. Oh, that's awesome. His road to his uh, first top 10 finish on his road to being the fittest man on earth the following year. Oh, that's his call. Okay. Because okay. Sevon wants, Sevon says Dallin. 
not this year, but next year. Yeah. I don't know if my, my I don't know if my girlfriend met her met him, but uh, he was at the TFX, right? And she she competed there too. Right. Yeah. Leahy. Did she meet him or she, you don't know? Is she, she I don't track? remember. I gotta ask her. Julia, did you meet Bill Leahy? She's probably asleep again. I don't know. The uh, crazy thing about him is his weight. He's like almost two twenty, and he's five eleven. And he, I mean, he, he's not shredded, but he looks normalish. But he's big. Is that like the same size as that dude from Australia? I can't think of his name. Jake uh, Douglas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's. Is that like his size? I think Bill's a little taller than he is, and Jake's obviously more like built looking, appearing. Uh, I bet they're the same weight though, right about. Maybe even Jake's lighter. No, she didn't meet him. No. Oops, shoot. That's a shame. You should have gotten his autograph. It'd be like getting a rookie baseball card. <laughs> <laughs> so are you and Stefan going to go head-to-head -head with uh, Dallin and, and Leahy? Is that going to be a whole year worth of uh, trash talking? Yeah, back and that, forth. That is a fantastic idea. We haven't talked about it yet. I was going to say, I can just I see put him your money where like, your mouth is. <laughs> you're an idiot. What are you talking about? No, you're an idiot. You didn't see him do thrusters. Like, I can just – that's – that would be awesome. I've seen a lot of people who are in real good shape, and it's just, he's just a freak. And I think that they are all freaks, but he, he has a couple uh, assets that many don't have. The vertical jump is one of the biggest. His, vert his vertical jump is insane? Yeah, he, he's uh, he's 5'11", and he can single arm, like, dunk, standing dunk, which is crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, so and he's been able to do it since apparently he was 15 or 16 years old. So, and he's a white guy too, right? I automatically white don't dude. think that they, <laughs> I already go to no, he can't do that. But oh, that's cool. All right. Well, fine. I'm on your side then. Leahy, it is. All hey, the dude, he, he had just done some sort of 30 minute AMRAP at the at this camp. And he had gotten out of the car, started doing this, this EMOM. It was a crazy amount of repetitions that were about to leave. And it was probably thousands of contractions he had done. Burpees, squats, step-ups, the whole thing, shuttle runs. And then he's just standing underneath the basketball hoop. And someone goes, hey, Bill, grab it. And he just leaps up like it was nothing. <laughs> so it was cool. Uh, then what else? Then we got the uh, 100 burpees for for time, right? Isn't there $1,000 on the line for that? For That's Tim mean. Murray and uh, right. Colton Burns and Jake? Right. Who you, you just Mertens all the way? The Mertens on everything. What did he do differently this year that makes you think that? Is there something that you saw? Dude, different? He's young. He's young. Is he like 22, 23? 25, which I think is, I mean, Madero's is 24 and he's young too. But I don't know. I, I, I competed against Colton. Oh, where? Well, for a while, actually, when I was a team competitor, his team is the team that beat my team out for the games in 2018. So we finished sixth, his team finished fifth, and he was part of a team then. And then various like partner competitions, and the dude can just carry the load on any team that he's on. He can do like the entire amount of work, and he's just been getting better and better every single year. It's nuts. Wait, wait, did you say Colton is good at holding his load? Is that what you said? <laughs> He might be the best at holding his load. I, I heard he hasn't ejaculated in about a year, which is why he's going to do so well. <laughs> you want to hear a fucking crazy shit? So, so one time I was with, I was, uh, I was hanging out with my my boy Rafa, and he was telling me about a gentleman. He's probably, I don't know, I'm probably going to get in trouble for telling the story, but he was talking about how a, a friend of his was uh, staying with him one time, and kind of an odd dude, religious cat. And he kept talking about semen retention and how he wouldn't ejaculate and he would just hold his semen in for months. And you've never, you heard of that before, right? That's real. Is it real? I thought it was. You've never heard of that? Mm -mm. I You're need to know kidding. about that for my kids. You no. about that either? That's a real thing. Yeah, tell us. We're yeah, boy moms. I, we need We're to, boy moms. We, Go ahead. Yeah, I got a boy. I need to be able to help. So what? <laughs> I got to tell him not to ejaculate for how long? What? <laughs> yeah, this is all. Like, you can go either way with it. Like, people will say that it's healthy to ejaculate regularly, and then there will be people who say that there's performance enhancements to not doing it. Um, <clears throat> I think I think Sevan even had a guy on the podcast who withheld himself for a year 
like he wouldn't even have sex for a year until we made a million dollars. And then he made a million dollars. And the thought process is if you put off the gratification on that, then everything else will rise as well. And people will do it before. Just explode. If you hold it for that long. Like I just envision men just exploding. Like how do you, I mean, I guess you would have to make that million dollars because I think well, eventually it starts sweating out your pores. I think. <laughs> Does it smell salty in here? Yeah. <laughs> it smells like chlorine in here. Like What's going on? Eucalyptus trees. <laughs> eucalyptus trees. Oh my God. I'm dead. <laughs> John Young, I think if you don't come for two weeks and you are used to it on a regular basis, it triggers a huge rise in testosterone. There you go, guys. That's, Wait, that's is that it. the real that's John the... Young or the black face John Young? No, that's, that's real John, John Young. Young. Oh, shit. That's a that's a real thing. Like that's what he said. Rise. What he said is there's some sort of data behind that. Hey, if that's the case, I should be a fucking superhero by now. I was going to say, how long has your girl been gone for again? I forget. What would you say? Too long. <laughs> has your bench gone up or anything? No? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Your I don't know. I'm, I'm testing my bench actually tomorrow, so I'll let you know. That'll be cool to hear. Yeah. <laughs> well, people would do it when I was on the wrestling team, and they'd be like, Got a big match coming up. I'm not going to jerk off this week. Jesus Wait, but did, that dude who, did that dude who held it for that long, did he have a, a spouse or a girlfriend or anything? Or he just... They, yeah, they would stay away from him. Or they would keep them off of them. Probably better to put... Oh, no. You, you've never heard of this. This is insane. No, I've never, ever heard of this. I think I heard... cool boys never heard of it. Oh, Okay, good. I, I just thought it was an always an urban met, uh, legend, you know. An urban well, that's the thing, and then there's also the John Young stand, the two week thing, and the test- testosterone spike. Oh no, sorry, I didn't. That was I didn't. No, this is what I meant to bring up was John Young. That's why I'm so strong. But like, <laughs> you have a wife, dude. How do you like? What is happening right now? You have a whole wife. A whole one, as opposed to a half a one. <laughs> Like a whole life. <laughs> what does it look like to have half a wife? One, one like pool boy that's not home for a uh, year and a half. Okay. <laughs> like, um, what Hunter? Oh, where, this is a great movie, Jake Chapman. Oh, is it, have you seen this movie, Josh Hartnett? Oh, good. You have it. Good. You do it. Oh, uh, forty days, he, forty days, he, and forty uh, nights. I've seen that movie at least a dozen times. Yeah, where he abstains from sex. Yeah, and then that and chick, it doesn't get quote raped like yeah uh, yeah what are we it's not, it's not really about? in quotes either is this? like some girl like ties him up and like bangs him up no he ties himself up mm. and then he's like waiting for his chick to come over so he can celebrate the 40 days of abstinence oh that's right but the other girl comes right yeah his ex-girlfriend like comes in like hours before 40 days is over he had this bet with this person saying he couldn't not have sex or like you know ejaculate for 40 days and then the bet, there's all this money on it, and everything's on the line. And some chick, while he's sleeping, like gets him off. <laughs> I remember that. Oh my god! That's I, a, I, it's like a '90s, late '90s, early 2000s. I remember game. Josh Hartnett. He was like right. the dude. Was, he was, was a heartthrob right, right. back in the '90s. Yeah, he every he was on every girl's wall back yeah, in. Yeah, you remember? You remember that? Hiller probably remembers this, that terrible fucking sci-fi movie. Uh, speaking of Elijah Wood, it was like Josh Hartnett, Elijah Wood, Usher. It was the yep. the faculty. You remember that one? The yep. faculty? I've never seen it, but it sounds great. You've never seen the faculty? Oh, you it's got Frodo yeah, yeah. in it? I'm in. Yeah, yeah you, you gotta, gotta watch, watch it. It's such, a, yeah. it's such like a cheesy, terrible 90s uh, sci-fi flick, but... Yeah. Hey, if it's got Frodo, I'm gonna love it. Can I, can I admit, I've always wanted to have like a... Um, like if I was ever invited on like a show like this, I've always wanted to have like a segment where it was just like talking about top five terrible movies with uh, Hiller. Go for it. I love movies. I'm a movie buff too. Go for it. Oh, I love movies. I don't know. Terrible? Yeah, like terrible movies that you watched in the past. I've got a list on here of my favorite movies ever. Like I thought about you the other day, actually, because I watched a movie um, yep. on Netflix from like 2005. Two shirtless guys thinking about each other. Great. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it was it, it was a movie called The Cave, and it was just fucking awful. I've seen that. You have? Yeah. Right where they, like they they discover a new cave system, and there's like fucking these like creatures, but it turns out these creatures were just humans that got stuck down there and didn't evolve. Yeah, that one's not the worst one though. Like it nowhere was- even close to the worst movie that. Have, have you seen Pooh, Blood and Honey? 
oh my god <laughs> uh, i've been trying to bring myself around to watch that movie but i'm like apparently the second hour, one is way better I want to waste. you guys know winnie the pooh right yeah range of bandit yeah that that's it this is it it's the pooh verse p-o-o-h like winnie the pooh mm-hmm and they made a, a horror remake because everything it's the movies are or the, 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 the idea of Winnie the Pooh is so old that now everybody can kind of make content on it. So they made the Pooh verse and they've got like Bambi and uh, what's the flying Tinkerbell like, dude. Uh, yeah. The, Re- the revenge of Bam. Okay. They're trying to make an Avengers horror verse featuring uh, Winnie the Pooh and all the creatures. Oh, they- yeah, why are they so angry? It's like Chris, Christopher, whatever, Robinson, Christopher Robin like, mm-hmm. decides yeah. to like not believe in them or anymore or some shit like something along those lines. Yeah, that's horrible. But those are all going to be in the bottom five. That's just like that's your answer, I think. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so has your opinion changed after watching uh, Sivan talk about how he cried during Godzilla versus Kong? Are you or Kong, Godzilla Kong? You gonna go watch it now? No. No. Have you seen it? Yeah, I liked it. <sighs> I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it. Knowing what you're going to get, like, you're going to like it. Dude, after – I like that idea from Carolyn. I should sign every CrossFit athlete a movie. That'd be cool. Are you pulling these up? or I'll pull them up. Hiller should sign every CrossFit athlete, yeah. So, like, you would have Patrick Vellner, and then maybe you would put him into – what's that movie with uh, the little dude running around? uh, Willow. Oh, that was good. Willow. You haven't seen reason, Willow? That just comes to mind. I think Patrick Vellner. That was a great movie. That was they. They used to have like figurines and stuff for that movie when it came out. You could make the whole Willow world. And then Brent Fakowski, I would think of. Uh, have you seen that movie Poor Things? Oh my god, <laughs> that movie is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I give him the William Defoe. That's Fakowski in Poor Things. Fakowski. Oh my god. Have you seen that Pool Boy? Dude, it's a fucking porno. It's a, <laughs> it is. That explains it's, it's such a weird movie. So much. It's like, and it's you, like you I'm, guys I'm haven't seen it. Movie, I'm such yeah. a movie movie buff. Like I'll, I'll probably get a lot of shit for this, but like one of my favorite things to do is to watch all the best picture nominations for the Oscars and like watch the Oscars and like and watch all that shit. And I remember watching Poor Things, and I was like, "Holy shit! How is this nominated for best picture?" Alexis couldn't sit through it. I kind of felt bad because I was into it. Damn, these are savage. Dude, the Shawshank Redemption is such a <laughs> savage, savage, savage. Hey, I like that. Hey, who would who would be in Brokeback Mountain? Oh God. Woo! Um, you gotta pick a pretty boy. Probably. I mean, um, of the games athletes. Sure. Yeah. Go Why for not? it. Dallin and Hopper. <laughs> I was gonna say Dallin too, because you gotta pick the pretty blonde kid. Like it just I don't know. I feel I feel like they're just like cool with one another. Oh, John you know? Young said Chandler and Noah. Oh, oh that's, that's better. Tire. Damn. Savage. Dude, Rich and Dan is Dan, good. Kenneth yeah. the rap. Uh Emily Abbott. Titanic. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up too. Yeah, Emily good, Abbott, dude. Titanic. Fire. Uh, Savon and Dave. Nomination for Brokeback Mountain. Good. See, here's the oh, thing. Lord. <laughs> yeah, Savon and Dave is good. <laughs> Danny Spiegel in True Lies. So that would cool. be the Jamie. Uh, Dave, all right, Danny that would Spiegel work. would be Jamie Lee Curtis. That'd be awesome. That would work. Who would play Danny Arnold? Spiegel, I like True Lies. What? Who would play Arnold in True Lies? Probably Medeiros. Nice. Right? Because he's kind of nerdy, but he also is kind of a badass. Then who you what? got for the movie Twins? I mean, Savon just seems like Danny DeVito in that. Doesn't <laughs> it? it would one hundred percent be Savon and Miller, probably. <laughs> you know, Savon and Miller. Would I be Schwarzenegger then? Yeah. yeah, that's cool. All right, dude. One of my favorite. Oh my god! During the Super Bowl, that fucking State Farm commercial with Arnold. Yep. Yes. Oh yep. my god. That Those commercials were. Who's what's Roy? Oh, I don't know what you want Royce done for, but. He could just, probably, he's Arnold. just a good name to bring up. He, he could be Arnold. Yeah. He could be Emily Arnold. Rolf is Sarah Connor. That who Kenneth and uh Jake have great ideas. Come with I, me if Jake is on fire. Yeah, Emily Rolf is Sarah Connor would be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> all time all-time greatest movie. 
Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Oh. John Young. Do I bring this up? No, I don't. That was pretty good, Jake, though. I see you. That was pretty good, though. I, I'm with you on that. Ask, ask John Young who would play Jesus in Passion of the Christ. Uh, well, right now he's saying Fraser for Napoleon. Napoleon uh, Dynamite? I think you might mean the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Oof. Do you guys see Saltburn? I uh, heard of it, but. God, you guys not watch very many movies? What well, movie you're picking it? some random out there movies right now. Mm -hmm. Saltburn. Saltburn? No, Saltburn. I try to bring it up. Uh, how, how did you feel about poor things? Did you not like it? Was it like, uh, or are you kind of into that weird? I mean, era? I liked it, but it was just such a weird, weird movie. All right, then watch Saltburn. It's legit. You guys should watch it too. Saltburn. Okay. Like, okay. And the whole time, just like think, how could he have made me watch this? And it'll make me feel good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I used to go to this Chipotle all the time to the point where I would kind of develop this weird relationship with the people on the other side of the counter. Like I would just talk with them all day to the point where they would give me DVDs. Like we would just exchange DVDs that we would watch. And this, this I stopped going to the Chipotle after this person gave me the movie called I Spit on Your Grave. Dude. <laughs> Holy shit. That movie is fucking wild. I had a buddy and we were watching it and he goes, where did you get this movie? And I go, the Dude at Chipotle told me to watch it, and he's like, "You gotta stop going to that Chipotle." <laughs> oh, he's probably doing things to your burrito when you don't know it. So, guys, the premise of this movie is this dude, this chick, is like staying at a house by herself for a, for a weekend, and these people, hillbillies, come and they, they do some not so great things to the chick, and uh, she ends up murdering all of them. Like it's brutal, brutal, and, and it's brutal. Doesn't she die and she comes back to life? That's what. It... Don't ruin the movie. Up in my me? Head. Yeah, me too. Sorry, sorry. Can they're you hear them? Watch it because it's breaking up in my head. Oh, uh, I can hear. I can Try hear again. you guys. Okay, there you go. Yeah, now yeah. you're back. I can hear you guys. Are you? Yeah. Gone? Uh -oh. I can hear yeah, you. you're can you're freezing a lot. Uh oh. Can you think... can you guys hear them or is it just me? I think it's just you guys because I can hear Hiller fine. Say okay, it's just us. Turkey, My bad. If you can hear me, yeah, I got you. It's back. So it was us. Our fault. They didn't, they didn't say turkey. They can't hear us. Turkey. Okay, Kenneth. The last. Yeah, just yeah, we me. can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, turkey. It. Turkey. Yep. Yep. If it would, it wouldn't be a. <laughs> they won't, they won't say turkey. <laughs> no what? No, no, no. Say turkey. <laughs> oh, okay, they can hear me. Okay. Turkey, turkey, turkey. So you obviously went, did you, what were you? Oh, there's Kenneth. He's taking one. There you go. Turkey, turkey. They can hear you. Colton in the Rudy movie. That's funny. Sorry. I was going back up through some of these answers to some of your questions. That was great. Did you get a camera uh, yet? No, not yet. I'm going to though. I keep like scrolling through the ones that you gave me and I can't remember which one you said goes directly to your computer. A74. Okay. I'm going to write that down right now. But yeah, I do. I want one. I'm going to go get one. So I know you are going to, um, what's the guy that you were just talking about? That's Bill. Bill Lee. Yeah. So you're going to go and cover his story. Are there any other, are you going to start doing more of those where you're going to go to gyms and follow <laughs> people? Or is that kind of just a new adventure that you're kind of just starting? I was just talking to my cousin and I kind of like jokingly threw it out at her. You know, uh, Ellie, Ellie Hiller. Who also isn't my cousin. We just said that she's my cousin. And apparently she lives right by the Masters event. And I, I have these like floating ideas. This this weekend I was supposed to go and do quarterfinals with Ocean State. And then some stuff came up and I couldn't make it out there. Um, I have I have a handful of people like that. But Bill is 100% like whatever I'm doing with Bill. Bill's my dude. And uh We'll see. I kind of want to make the LA thing happen. And outside of that, I got nothing on the docket. Mm -hmm. But I do enjoy doing those. It, it's cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you, because it's such a different different perspective, also something very different than your videos that you do. Was this something that you always wanted to try to do, which was to follow athletes or just kind of fell in your lap, just kind of became a thing and you're... I like to imagine what it was like a couple of years ago 
when I'm just like sitting there waiting for stuff to be uploaded to YouTube and I ask myself, what is something that I would have liked to have seen? Mm -hmm. That that applies to the Haley Adams one. It applies to a handful of stuff. So uh, I would like to put myself in positions where I can give myself of three years ago, five years ago, something to watch. So if anyone out there thinks that there's some stuff out there that's uh, like ready to be made, I'm ready to come make it. I know what I wanted to ask you too. When was it that you stopped making a video a day? Did you make a video a day for over a year? I did. What what stopped that? Was it the My entire goal is to get as many views as possible. That's the that's the guiding light and a hundred thousand subscribers. Like so if I can look at those two things and I can see that the things that I'm doing don't drive those goals, then I kind of shy away from whatever that might be. Where that goes is let's say I put up one killer video and I can see that it adds a hundred subscribers or 150. That's preferable to me than making two or three videos, each of which get 20. Mm. And, and if one video can get me 20 or 30,000 views, that's ideal along with 150 subscribers as opposed to five to 10,000 views per video. Cause first of all, it takes twice as much time to make all the videos versus the one. Gotcha. So it, it probably it's two thirds the time spent per video for 130% of the return. And I realized that at that point, and I kind of just kept going with it. Okay. And there's also a part of me that saw the Haley Adams video. And I was like, that one got almost 200,000 views. You can take like two weeks off now. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have I had to have made 20 videos to do that. Right. right. Mm-hmm. When I was making a video a day, like a video at 10,000 views was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. in one day versus like you said, a little bit here, a little bit there. Right. Um, when you create a video, this is a Garrett and I were trying to figure out which. So when you have an idea, do you find the clips that you want to use first and then you fill it in with your thoughts or do you have your thoughts and create the video and then find the perfect clips to put into the video? Every video starts with an idea. Okay. And then I have to decide if I can make a clickable title and a thumbnail. And then I just shout at the camera for anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. <laughs> and then as I'm like watching myself, things will arise. Mm-hmm. Like the, the huh or the wow or oh well. Oh, well. Right? <laughs> and any of that stuff, right? So it comes up as I'm editing. No, it, it's not something. There will be times where I'll be like, here's, I'm going to put this, here, I'm going to put this, but it's, it's mm-hmm. not that often. It's usually, it always starts with an idea. So like, I've been watching the, I've been rereading the CrossFit Journal articles and I'm thinking, oh, I can make this, but is it, will, will, I, will anyone click on this if I make it and how will I make it interesting for people to want to watch? And if I can't answer those questions, I don't make the video. Yeah. But if it were a video a day time, I would have made it. I want to get your uh, opinion on this piece of wonderful content and see what y'all think about this. Oh, fucking Bret Hart. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Nice muscle up. Did you know that's the demo guy? Yeah, who? who, What's the demo guy? The, the guy in this video is also the the figure for some of the movement standards. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. What? How do you get your content, pool boy? Who makes your all your content? Because you got some good ones up there. Thank that you. was my favorite. Because I'm a WWE fan too. Uh, yeah, I, grew I grew up on. I love Bret Hart. When Bret Hart went heel, I died. My heart hurt when he turned heel. I was so upset. Dude, my you heart guys- hurt when he went to WCW. That's yeah. Are you guys that, watching any of the um, the rivals or the WWE history? What's it on? The documentary, the documentary, A and E or whatever. They're going back through all the documentaries with all of the the guys. Have you seen any of those? I've been, oh, meaning, I've been meaning to watch watch those, but like my favorite series was uh, I don't know if you guys watched it. The, the dark side, the dark side of the ring. Have you ever seen those ones? Mm-hmm. I yeah. Oh bit. man, there was one heartbreak, like two heartbreaking ones where they did one about Chris Benoit. And uh, Owen Hart. If you Owen Hart. That, yeah, I saw the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Benoit was the dude who fucking killed his family and then killed himself. Yep. Dude, that, the, oh, the Owen, Owen Hart one was so sad. They are the Hart Foundation. I so I love them as a tag team. But what's funny is speaking of content, I I, I just remember that's how I got connected with Hiller. Was uh, the what he made that Wadapalooza video. 
Remember that a few, few uh-huh. years ago? Remember that? Yeah. Nico? Does that have a guy named Nico in it? Was Keanu. that one? Keanu. Crap. Keanu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Keanu. Yeah, yeah. And he's a freak. Dude, ridiculous. Oh, my God. That kid, yeah. like, he should have went to semis last year. But he, uh, I want to say he got, like, a top 30 finish in all the quarterfinal workouts. But he, like, got a thousandth in that crossover workout or something like that. I met this dude at uh, the West Coast Classic last year. And uh, I think he snatched like 280, didn't he? And he's a small. Oh, no, guy. the the NorCal Classic. NorCal, NorCal Classic. Yeah, right. dude, he's yeah, he's a freak, man. He's got almost a 400 pound clean snap. Yeah, 400. Almost, dude, damn near. I that dude can't weigh over 190. Huh? He can't weigh over 190 pounds. Dude, I know it's nuts. He's probably like 175 or something. The huh? dude is just a freak. so he's looking good this year, then, huh? Yeah, he should make it. He is should. He, he's going yeah, individual, I'm, right, Keanu? Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 yeah. cheering for him. He should make it, man. That guy is such a he's such a make cool it, dude. Make it where? Make it where? Semis? Semis. Okay. Mm-hmm. He should. That'll be cool. Yeah, it'll be cool. So where'd you get your content? Yeah, how you make your content, bro? <laughs> oh shit, I forgot. I, I <laughs> like random, uh, who's your who's your famer guy? <laughs> yeah, I have, like random ideas in my head sometimes where I just I like I enjoy making fun of myself. I enjoy making fun of other shit. Um I'll come up with like fun ideas just to help promote uh the Savon podcast. Um, I have, uh, so I, I train out of a gym called CrossFit Kindred and, uh, I've been super close with, uh, the two owners, Vanna and Leone and Van is more like the business side. And then Leone is the primary coach there coaches all the classes. And she's also one of my training partners. So a lot of the times we'll be training together and like, I'll just be like, Hey, can you film this video, uh, for me real quick? Um, so she'll, she'll film it. And then there's another friend of ours that uh trains with us named katrina and and sometimes she'll film some of my shit just randomly yeah you have your instagram is fire like i go through some of them especially the one where you're dancing the other day uh <laughs> oh when i was singing the gay so so that cut so that song is the gay country song that julia is talking about the one where i'm wearing taylor's uh sentinel training or whatever the hell it's called Sentimental, it's, sentimental training. Is that what it's called? I think it's sentinel. <laughs> sentimental. Sure it's I like sentinel. sentimental better. <laughs> sentimental training. Yeah, like sentimental training. Oh, it means oh, a lot to me. All right. You didn't give her video cred. What's up? She doesn't even live with me. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> what? She filmed like one video, I think. What do you use to edit? Do you do you use edit on your phone? No, I don't do it. It's I, I'm not fancy schmancy with the video stuff. I literally just upload it to Instagram and clip it through there. What video editor do you use again? Hiller, you were starting to tell me at one point, but there were so many people. Is it just a final cut? Final cut. Yeah, it's easy. Final you buy cut. it one time. I never people heard people will live and die by like DaVinci Resolve or Adobe, but I don't want to switch over there and figure out how to use all those. Like it's kind of, I don't know. It's like you learned how to use a lawnmower and you don't want to figure out how to use a new lawnmower. It's like, I could, maybe that one's better, but this one works really well for me at the moment. And that you use for YouTube or yeah. both through real. Oh, yeah. oh. oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Is that how you're able to, cause we were trying to figure out when we were making our little funny reels or whatever, like put the faces on and put the logos on or whatever. Is that how you're able to get like the floating head or the one yeah. that one, was it you that did it or someone else that did it where it really looked like that you were that person's face? Someone else made. Oh, okay. One of I those, yeah. it was, but that's There's some sort of an AI app on your phone that'll do that, I think. Dude, I, I probably watched AI. Wad yet. Zombie made one like that. Yeah, I, I probably watched about. that Wad Zombie one of you. Taylor, how much is Final Cut? $2.99. There you go. $2.99. There you go. But, but I think I just made a video saying that you can get a free trial for 90 days. And then if you just completely reformat your laptop, you can keep on downloading the free trial. <laughs> so I did that like three separate times. So I basically had it for a year for free. Mm-hmm. And then I bought it after the third time. Oh, do you, oh, oh, shoot. I lost the question. Baby, you got one. Oh, is this a gay conversation there? What is this? Conversion, Conversion therapy? therapy? It no, we just ended up getting two guys to take their shirts off for yeah. Heidi on the show because Heidi was Heidi was very upset when she, she first got very here. Very much needed this, and everybody guy. had shirts on. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder what happened to my guy Brandon. It was my average gay CrossFitter. Oh, 
Yeah, that's he's, right. He's the one who he told was... me to like keep my shirt off on all these videos. I hadn't heard from him in a bit. That's right. It's been like six months. I remember that dude. He was even dabbling in the Sevon podcast chat, right? <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, he was definitely in there. It might have got a little too much for him. Oh, hey, speaking of the chat, who does anybody know who's Braylon Tender? Is that Trish? Is is it? Is that really Trish? Is he's it the uh, future thirty-five and over CrossFit Games champion of the world, and he can get you to everywhere you need to be. Oh, okay. Obviously, I thought about reaching out to him. I would. I heard- <laughs> Uh, oh okay never mind not asking any more questions about that <laughs> why oh i don't know you look like what is he on fentanyl like i heard Sevon talking oh, about it the other day like hey for each show's right final cut is so 2017 they haven't updated it in forever from what i hey i don't i don't know maybe you should start off with something else but I, i'm into final cut works really well for me mm-hmm. there you go he's looking for 10 men age 35 to 30 45 <laughs> uh, who is looking for 10 men Ooh, braylon tender fitness braylon. competitor oh that's right he doesn't he go on the show and just tell everybody that he's got a training program that can take them to the games in like five minutes or whatever is that that's that guy mm. right he seven had somebody on and it, it was it was like uh someone who had been there done that and he goes if you ever want to like reach your peak potential reach out to me it was like uh it wasn't Fraser and it wasn't, maybe it was Froning. It was funny, whoever it was. <laughs> do, you, do you ever look at how many names that you've now turned into verbs? Like you got Bryce, you got, you know what I mean? Like you have so many names that you've turned into verbs now that people don't even use the real verb anymore. It's just, they just use people's names. It's, I love how it happens on accident. Cause I just, cause even Jada Coons for a little while, like they would answer questions with just Jada Coons. Like there, there wouldn't be any words. It was just they would just answer the questions. Well, that was Jada Coons. Like it oh, was. Well. Well, yeah, I, I like I like the phrases that come out of nowhere. The, yeah, and people. It's like just, how Sevon's got Standy. Oh yeah, and Dave, I, have I, you I, heard I, of that? Yes, yes, I have. Heard I wasn't of that. sure if you heard that episode where he explained what a Standy was. Yes. Pool boy, you ever gotten a Standy? Dude, every every time I hear him talk about that, I just in my head imagine Savon standing like on his couch or on his bed <laughs> with his like pants down to his ankles, like a twelve year old boy peeing in a urinal, just getting a standy. I don't know. You imagine? <laughs> I, no one ever explained. Does it have to be a wraparound, or do you have to be standing in the? That's a reach around, dude. That's different. Uh, yeah. That's a standy. That's... A standy is a face to face thing. Think oh, like yeah, look the person in the eye. No, no. So like, oh, like, I think your eyes would be closed. So like, I'm imagine cold. Savon with a soup, like doing a superhero pose. You know, like standing up tall, like hands <laughs> like this, like flexing, and his pants are down at his ankles. That's I don't want literally, that. He's literally standing. Oh. <laughs> he's literally standing. The other person can or or doesn't have to be standing, and they're doing the shake weight on him. Oh, That's I can envision the shake weight. I know what the shake weight is. That's okay. a standy. <laughs> wow. I, I do like how our imagine it's like reading a book, right? Like you, we both read The Lord of the Rings and we both think of Frodo Baggins differently until you see the movie and now it's like, well, that's what Frodo looks like. Yeah. Elijah Wood. I imagine the standy a little different. I in, don't know. In I my just, book. I picture Savon superhero pose like this the whole time and just stand. Can chicks get a standy? Yes, but that would most likely have to be a reach around it, it, uh, that would be a very awkward position if you were standing face to face for your wrist anyway you'd have to get kind of low right yeah you, yeah there's... you do like a ha- like a half middle split <laughs> i mean I, 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 listen if you have the flexibility in your hands to stand in front of a, a girl and sure wait I, why does that have to be a reach around because that's the most comfortable position for your hand. Think about it, dude. Yeah, you yeah. have to go like this for like get. I mean, <laughs> oh, a splitty Ortega or yeah. a Neely. A Neely. A Neely. I like to think of it more as like a tickly because you're like tickling it, right? Isn't that the uh, uh, Craig Ritchie's agent Neely? Oh God, yeah, hey, James Neely. James Neely. <laughs> Now we know where his name is. Well, now we've made another little (laughs) 
crazy. Right, I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble. It was funny. I was telling people to tune in, like from my gym, to watch this, <laughs> and I told oh, them well. that I would behave, but <laughs> nope. that's no. Up oh well. No. no. Oh well. I do imagine okay. Stevon like sitting back and watching this, and he's just like, "What the hell, guys? A standee's obviously this." <laughs> Probably. No, he knows. There should be a pop up book for uh, for a standee. we were in the adult like, section. No, it doesn't have to be an adult section. You can put that in the kids section. They put worse shit in the kids section now. For real. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Colleen found a couple of the books in our library, uh, and what, was what just books? For, like the transgender. The trans books? Oh, in the kids section. Like? So in um <laughs> in our like? library, there's the kids section, but then they have the parent wall. So they have all the parent books. And thankfully, when I was looking through the books, it was on the very top shelf. So I I saw it and I was like, what the is this one of those books that we've been hearing about? Because you see them in other places, and but I had never seen one. I've never seen one in his backpack. I've never seen one in the library until I saw this one, and I. Reach down. I don't. Do you still have it? I think I sent you pictures of it or whatever. But it I don't was. Think I can bring it up though. Yeah, it's a transgender book talking about gender, talking about why parents need to tell their kids about multiple genders and what age we need to start talking to them about it and why it's important and all that type of stuff. And yeah, it was crazy. The only I'm, part. How much did it cost? It was at the library. Was, yeah, free. you can get it out for free. It's free. Oh, mm -hmm. That's awesome. yeah, yeah. You can literally just go up to the with your library card and. Yeah. And bring it home and check it out. The only thing that I was like, fine, if it's here, it was on the very, very top shelf. So a kid, it's not in kid view. So with that, I was like, fine, it, this is a public library. But it also was right next to the book, which I found very interesting that it was like, why it's important for boys to be boys or something like that, or like masculine and teaching masculinity to boys and, or something, whatever. And I was like, Oh, so you're confusing the both because the messages are right next to each other that don't work together. So. Yeah. It was crazy. You look I mean, into the book at all. Huh? Did you, did you look at it at all? Or of did you course look? I did. I sent pictures to Garrett and was like, this shit is in our public library. Yeah. <clears throat> Dude. Transgenders are awesome. I, did you hear everybody freaking out now? All the little Gen Zers are freaking out because Netflix put um, put The Sopranos and put Sex in the City on their playlist. And in there, I guess one of the characters, Samantha, I think, goes, New York used to be uh, trendy by day and tranny by night. <laughs> Which I, that, I remember watching it. I thought it was hysterical when she said that. And Gen Zers are losing their minds. They're like trying to kick Sopranos said the N word literally 30 times through the whole series. They, they said, and like the whole word. Wait until they see Django. Oh my. And they're like boycotting. Oh yeah. There you go. Gender identity for kids. That's awesome. A book about a book about what a book about finding yourself, understanding others and respecting everybody. And then I just flipped through the page and this talks about. Uh, I like that sentiment, but I don't know if I enjoyed like the idea of the book as a whole. Yeah. There's gender fluid. There's. I don't even know what gender fluid means. Cisgender boy. Yeah. Um, I think that means like a certain fluid comes out of you or something. <laughs> the other day, Sevan put up, uh, the other day, Sevan reposted something on his Instagram. It was like male and female. And then at the top and the bottom, it was mental illness and it was a Venn diagram and yep, everywhere in between yep. male and female <laughs> that intersected yep. was mental illness, basically insinuating that anything that is fluid means, yeah. that, means that you're, you get, you're a little bit messed up until you figure out that you're a male or a female. No, Disney plus sucks. And I've seen all <laughs> the stuff that's on there and it is. Yeah. No, nah, never. My kid will not be getting Disney plus. Mm -mm. You don't like the Avengers movies or any of that? Oh, I love the Avengers movies. He's talking about the like the cartoons for kids. They have explaining how to be transgender or that if you feel like you want to wear a dress, then you're automatically a girl. And it's just there's weird shit in there. That what well, the parents that'll like almost push their kids to try all that stuff out. Is that weird? I think they're just trying to get this the minority sympathy, right? Like they're probably not. They don't have a DEI label. So in order to have a DEI label, they're like, look, I'm an ally. My kid is transgender. And now they get the the sympathy. What's that thing called when the parents do something to their kids? Proc uh Munchausen. Yeah. 
It's mm -hmm. like, pro yeah, Munchausen by proxy. They just, they can't. What is that word? Munchausen? Yeah, by proxy. What is that? I don't know what any of that means. Proctology? Yeah, that. You guys are making shit up. <laughs> I'm not. I swear to God, I'm not. It's like when, when you make your kid sick so that you can get the sympathy of other people. Like, here, let me donate money to you. Shut let up. Me. Yeah. You've never heard you've of never that? heard of that, but you've you, heard you of mad about not us not <laughs> knowing movies, and you've never heard of that before. You never munch, heard munch something is is yeah. pretending munch your kid is sick so you yeah. can get free food. Basically, yes. yeah. And GoFundMe's and, and money like, and sympathy. I love and... you here. Let me help you. Let me take care of you. Let me go fund you. Like and oh. also the praise of being such a good mom. Yeah. Your your kid is so sick and you're taking care of your kid and it's so difficult. And oh yeah. So with the transgender shit. Like, it's just, it's the same thing. It's like, oh my God, you're such a good parent. You're letting your kid be themselves. You're letting like, you know, and they get all the praise for that. Hey, how do you spell this word? Oh, oh boy. Well, what is the word first again? Munch? <laughs> I don't know if it, it's- There you go. Jeffrey Munch. Birchfield Munch. coming in hot. There you go. Good job <laughs> here. I'll pull it up so you can read it. And there. Munch. Munch Housing by Thank uh, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Papa Birch. Leave that up for a minute. I need to. Sure. Oh my god. Munch Munch Cousins? That sounds like a fucking. There's a. There's a well, I'm gonna do the thing that we Munch should all do. Go to Urban Dictionary. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Where a person convinces themselves that they are ill by googling the symptoms. It's a psychological psychosomatic illness. Somatic. There's nothing wrong with you. But Munchausen by proxy server, step away from the, okay. Is, is this what you were? I don't think this yeah, is what so we're like the kid is healthy. The kid is healthy as can be, but the parents do something like they'll like slowly give them medicine or poison them or whatever, make up these fake symptoms and whatnot, just so that like the kid is. You've never seen these parents that get arrested for this shit? Like arrested? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No. For like sure. my kid's got the flu and you're going to get arrested for saying that they have it and they don't. Well, no, it's way worse than that. Like they literally like slowly poison their children. Oh, they're their... actually getting them sick. Yeah, they're making yeah. them Dude, sick. There was what's fun. I, I forget the name of it, it's but I think it's a, it's a. I think it's oh, a movie yeah. called. I think there's a movie called like Mother or Mom, or maybe it's called Run. I don't remember. Room? But it's the same concept where this mom wants to protect her child from the world so much that she slowly gives her kid like these pills that like shut down the kid's nervous system so the kid yeah. grew up thinking she was paralyzed or handicapped and can't yeah. walk. come on but it yeah. turns out that the mom was just giving her child these pills to like make her not be able to walk so she was always dependent on her mom like it's it's a fucked up movie but it's it's pretty good you ever see that movie with jake gyllenhaal like that is that the one where he plays the boston marathon runner who gets bombed earlier you're, 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 it's called bubble boy Yes. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Same thing, but they put it. They put him in a bubble, and yes. he ruins his whole life. This is the yep. same idea, right? Same idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. Yeah. It's it's different, but same. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know that was Jake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> I forgot. I forgot all about that. <laughs> the guy from Roadhouse. Yeah, I had never heard of that. That's crazy. Dude, I, I didn't hate Roadhouse. Did you guys really hate Roadhouse? No, oh, I love Roadhouse. Fuck. Oh you man, the first one was too. But if you went in there looking for again, it's what you were looking for when you watched the movie. See, the thing is though, is the first one, yeah, it was dumb, but it was like the eighties. It's cheesy. It's Patrick Swayze. It's like oh, it's, to it's be, like right? blood yeah. sport. It's the like the new sport one's cheesy. Like, it's supposed you know, to be cheesy. You know it's gonna, you know it's gonna be a bad movie, but it's fun. And like, so was the new one. That was the new one, though. I thought the same thing about the no, new one. No, no, I'm so sick was... of remakes. Hollywood. Yeah, you're sucks. just mad because it's a second one. If you, if uh, yeah, you're just because did you like Roadhouse too when the when the original Roadhouse came out with Roadhouse too? Did you like Roadhouse too? No, no. Oh, I did. No. That's wait, wait, wait a minute. There was a Roadhouse too. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Was there a part two? I don't think there was a part two. What am I thinking of then? I want to know what people go into movies looking for when they claim that they are then bad. Right? I think you got to go into every movie assuming it's going to be Maybe I'm bad. wrong, Vindicate. I was thinking of a different movie. I'm sorry. There's a lot of 80s cheesy. 
movies. Yeah, I think it's. I think you can judge what a movie is going to be based off the trailer. Like if the if the trailer tries to take take itself serious, like I'm going to go into it thinking like, all right, I'm going to judge this movie based off of the tone. What if of you don't trailer. watch the trailer, what? What if you like don't watch trailers? Oh, I always watch trailers. I love trailers. Do you watch all the way to the end to find the secret parts at the end of the movie too? Oh yeah. Do you watch the credits through the credits to? I'll always Google like beforehand. Like, is there an after credit scene? Like, I was really disappointed wow. when Godzilla didn't have a after credit scene. I was expecting one, but no. <laughs> yeah. I totally think that people like. Uh... Travis in here, Bellinghausen, who go into stuff like Roadhouse thinking it was bad, were expecting something it, it wasn't. And if you expect it to be really bad and only have hope for the future, it can only be good. I thought it was good. I'm just personally so <laughs> I just like Jack I'm naked over, dudes. I'm over remakes. <laughs> That's all. And Jake Gyllenhaal was shredded. All right, here you go. What is this? Heather, have you ever seen? I got to watch that. He's gonna be mad at me now because I haven't seen that. <laughs> Did you like? Who said they liked Bloodsport? I like that movie. All the Van Damme movies. Fuck I, yeah. yeah, they were all great. So, I don't know. Oh, this is a new movie that I've heard is good. The first film. Yeah, Greg. Greg likes this movie. I wonder what type of movies Mr. Greg Glassman watches, if any. <laughs> I don't think he he does. You see him know. watching Harry Potter? No. Maybe with his kids. Greg Glassman watching Harry Potter? No. No. I could also see him not wanting to pollute his children's mind with anything like Harry Potter. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I don't see him like Wizards aren't real, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, don't know. Maybe. Or how many kids you think went out there and tried to do that split? You know what I mean? Thinking that they could do it, seeing it, and just go try to recreate the split. I had a member of my affiliate named Raj who was curious if CrossFit could help him do that. He <laughs> came in. He was in his 40s, and he goes, hey, dude, I want to be able to do the splits like Van Damme between the trucks. Can CrossFit help me do that? I told oh, him yes. Have you seen that commercial? <laughs> I told him yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be. <laughs> Have you seen that commercial with Van Damme where he does the splits between the trucks to the Enya song? Fucking wild. Oh no. I swear to God, the dude's splits were wild. Like, bring your legs apart. No, no, no. My my the client of the affiliate. It was like that. <laughs> and he had to get to here, right? <laughs> oh yeah. It's your did you put him in that uh did you ever try that thing where you sit in it and you turn the wheel and it like supposed to stretch you out so you can get in a split? The that, the that thing's abductor insane. machine. Yeah, that thing's insane. I tried it once, never again. I was like, this is just absolute torture. Can you guys do the splits? I used to be able to do a like a front split, not the side one, and only with my left leg forward too, because my right hip doesn't roll like that. But nice, Colleen could. Colleen, you can do them. I come from a dance background, so I was classically trained in dance for years so yes i was able to do that and then i started lifting weights and i can't do them anymore <laughs> oh were, were you guys ever into video games growing up yes yeah you remember the game mortal kombat yes, yes. you know the character johnny cage yes. yes he was directly inspired uh by van damme oh cool so You're like originally originally the creators of mortal kombat wanted to make a van damme video game so they reached out to him to ask permission or whatever that shit and i guess they couldn't get the green light for it so they instead created mortal kombat and made i guess johnny cage's character purely based off of van damme oh that's fire i played that game all the time mm -hmm. it wasn't until stuff started to be online and you had to play with other people i was just trying to beat the video game i wasn't trying to run around with 20 other people dude i'm the same way like i i, I couldn't do it it i couldn't get into it if i tried i really tried with call of duty and whatnot but When's the last time you guys played a video game? Well, we've been married for 12 years, so I haven't played a video game in the last 12 and a half years. Colleen said, cut that shit out. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty much like, <laughs> you cannot have video game night anymore, lady. Well, we did, oh my God, years ago, probably nine or 10 years ago, we bought a Sega, like an old school, old school Sega. Sega. It yeah. was like a random find. I think no, we were in Costco or we were BJ's or something like that. And I was like, oh shit, we got to get it. So we played, I think, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And then 
it's been Without collecting dust yeah. since then. But we were just actually talking about getting some systems. The um, old ones, though. Like yeah, the like Super the Nintendo Super Nintendo, ones. maybe a Nintendo. Um, 64. Yeah. 64, yep. And um, to start to teach the baby to play a little bit or whatever. Like, we don't, like the fun games, like the Mario games, Sonic, um, Why, Donkey what did, Kong. What were you into? Did, all that type of stuff. Did you go, did you I, get into? I played up until about 2019. And Alexis, was, cool and Alexis was like, you're done. <laughs> no, sorry. I played up until about 2018. And then I stopped basically for the same reason that uh, you stopped, Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> Alexis is like, hey, <laughs> I actually know what I, there was a couple of there was a couple at my affiliate and the chick said to the dude, I just can't take dudes seriously. And I'm like, I don't want Alexis to think that I'm some pussy for like playing video games. I'm done playing video games. I never played ever again. No, it was basically like, do you want to play video games or do you want to get laid? And I was like, I would like to get laid, please. So the video games can go in the closet. And right, uh, right, yeah, right. Like, yeah. Priorities. For sure. I mean, okay. just priorities. Well, here's the thing, though. I consider YouTube a video game. Just like real say, life. It's just all numbers and stuff. It's like, you just it like level up in the freaking video game, trying to level up in the video game. It, yeah, it's... CrossFit saved me from video games. I literally it would play all you? the way up until I started CrossFit, and then that was when I stopped. What was your game of choice? Oh man, I was a huge like besides like games like Mortal Kombat. I was a diehard like survivor horror uh, guy. Like I love scary movies and I love all that shit. So I was like super into Wonder the Man. Resident Evil franchise. Oh. I was super into uh, like Dead Space. Um, those were like my top games. It would scare the ever ever living shit out of me, but I would still play them. It's ridiculous. Jake Chapman is savage, <laughs> but you're not wrong, Jake. You're not wrong, but that is fucking savage oh right now. You're not wrong. Hey, I'm convinced DDR helped me lose a bunch of weight. You know that game? No, what Dude, is that? My Dance girl Revolution. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, yep. my girlfriend is like the fucking Van Damme of DDR. Oh, she, yeah. she's one of those ones that she'll like literally hold, hold the, back. the handle and just like yep. freaking – go crazy it was like nuts i was gonna ask do you like the game better with the mat at home or did you have to go to the arcade and like that was your that was your shit my I assume the, the arcade you gotta do it at the arcade my parents had to have gone through thousands of dollars of mats because i would just crush them all because i was a fat little shit and i would just pound the hell out of those mats and the buttons would break and i go mom i broke it again <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're like a hundred bucks a mat yeah they're not yeah, cheap. that was a big thing for a while. Dance yeah. games are super gay. All right, Jake, you're not wrong, but <laughs> it helped me in my weight loss journey. They had the ones at the um, when you went to like Dave and Buster's or whatever, and you would just step onto the dance pad. It was like you know what I mean? you know what I'm talking about With the the ones. whatever. I, I was terrible at that shit, but I had no problem doing it and just making a complete fool out of myself in front of 95 people at Dave and Buster's. But it was fun. Dude, Dave and Buster's is awesome. Yeah. Dude, there's a there's a place nearby where I live. Uh, I want to say it's called like Level Up, where like it's kind of like an arcade bar kind of, but like you'll go in there and there's yeah, literally yeah. just like big screen TVs and there's like couches in front of them all. And you can literally, I think for like 10 bucks an hour, rent out like a gaming system, like any gaming system, old, new, and they have like a menu full of all the games that you could like play with it and then also order like drinks and food and just hang out with friends and fucking play games and shit. It's pretty awesome. I just spent like $200 trying to beat a high score in a basketball game at my kid's birthday party yesterday. I was legit. It was intense. It looked like I played a full on basketball game. I was sweating. I had to take my sweatshirt off. It like it and I did. I and then my buddy beat me like right after. After I set the new high score, he came up and spent like another two hundred dollars and beat me by like three points. I was like, "Well, damn." Is that Papa shot? Yeah. Where you're just like trying to make all of them in a and certain the, time and frame. Then the, and... back, the the basket move. If you make it to the next level, the basket moves back and forth as you're trying it. And it's the dumbest thing because I'm basically the same height as the basket. It's not. It shouldn't be that ridiculously difficult to do. But mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Just... I love that those games. Yeah, I couldn't stop. I was just like, no, I'm right there. I got it. And I just couldn't stop myself. Winning all those tickets for your baby. Yeah, I did win the... him a ton of tickets, though, for him <laughs> to go pick out his whatever, his airplanes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 
but you probably could have spent m less money just buying it. Yes. I, yes, for sure. <laughs> but no, I needed my score to be on the top in the lights. Like that was just. Well, I, our friend spent way more money. They had to beat that. me. <laughs> to, so yeah, I had it for like five Walter, seconds. My wife would be pissed if I spent 200 bucks on Papa shot. Oh, she wasn't excited about it, but <laughs> I was also entertained and not bothering her while she was taking care of the birthday party. It was all so, good. It was fun. It was fine. It was fun. The place had a spot for the kids, and then it had the two hundred uh, bucks. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> well, there you the whole go. Thing. Yeah. I, I love this game. It's fun, and right? And I would always get infuriated when the freaking person would go in there and just play with it, the thing. You know, oh, the little, yeah, the little yeah, nozzle yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that flicks. They would just flick it. But you ruined the top score. <laughs> you ruined it for everybody, forever. Nobody could beat it. That's fire. Or, Hiller, are you in here as admin? If you, we got a, we did the 90 minutes thing. I told Savon, I was like, I got a whole job I have to go to right after this. So, oh, yeah. Do, yeah. if you want to stay on. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. Oh, you're out too? Okay. <laughs> I'm coming to hang out with you guys. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it for holding my hand for the first one because that first 20 minutes, I thought I was going to drop dead. I, you did good. Boy was here. What do you mean? I, my whole body was shaking. Thank God for pool boy. I was just uh, like, <laughs> Colleen is in the same room as you. I, yeah. It, uh, it didn't matter. I couldn't, uh, but it was. It was really fun. It was a good time. Thank you guys. I really appreciate your help. I really do. Cool. Guys, all the chat. Thank you guys. Appreciate you for not lighting me wait up. Minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you, you can't move yet. Why? You, move yet. you got two seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. This is this is what you got to do, dude. When you when you're on Stefan's stuff, you got to utilize his stuff. You got to be like, hey guys, just so you know, we have our own podcast. It's over here. It's called oh. Home Things. We do, we do videos. You go live, right? Yeah. You've got 180 subscribers, and every subscriber you get from this point forward, you can dedicate to the end segment on this podcast. You oh. do one John Young the other day. That was cool. You got yeah, Pedro scheduled. Pedro's you had Stefan on the other day. It was great. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're hanging out with Pedro in a couple hours. Yeah, I got to go to work real quick, and then, uh, and then, yeah, I got That's Pedro. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to bet that Stefan would have been pissed had you had not plugged your own podcast. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. I'm not used to running the behind the scenes. I've got nothing. I can't and help Colleen her. Colleen <laughs> can't see it. And so I'm, uh, I, I have all this stuff. Shit. Yeah. So I'm just not used to being the one to run. I'm kind of glad you came in and took over because I was like, I'm not used to it. Colleen usually does it and my friend Jeff. So, but Ooh. this is, this is, yeah, one subscribed. Oh, thanks, Vindicate. Don't worry. We're going to get the new swag. We got to yeah. get some new swag. Yeah. Pre order tomorrow. Don't forget. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw that. For the Hiller uh, collection, right? And and the new CEO shirt. I thought that one came out today. Tomorrow? No, I think tomorrow. Tomorrow, CEO. Tomorrow. I told I told Travis I'm going to exclusively be wearing those shirts. That's all I have. I still have the original Hiller, the one that looks like uh, it's denim. That that whole jumpsuit. It's the oh, pants, the joggers, right. and the sweatshirt. It actually yeah. looks like it's denim. Mm -hmm. I just I live in vindicate stuff. I that's all I basically have, and the gym that we go to. Yeah. Both tomorrow. Cool. Yeah, we'll be getting it. Well, next time you guys do like no no rep shirts, can you do just a normal tank top or a normal t-shirt for us girls that don't wear crop tops all the time? <laughs> yeah, she was like, I don't want to show my belly. She was, yeah, she's not that one that does not that. A, not all the time. No, <laughs> not a crop top type of person. So look at that. Look at that. One oh, thanks guys. I appreciate you so much. Do we cool. do we believe them? I I don't know, but just the fact that they're even willing to say wow, that. Wow, it's at 185 already. Oh, damn. Thanks, what? guys. You picked up five. Just now. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. I appreciate yeah, dude, you for letting, me, uh, for letting me give this a shot. And But that's, what, it, that's yeah. what it's been. That's what it's been every time that, uh, you know, you guys have given her an opportunity to hang out with you guys and talk with you guys. and Yeah, even you know. like John Young and Pedro and just helping me out. I really do appreciate it so much. It's Isn't John Young a monster? He is, I never <laughs> knew what it, like, I always wanted to debate an analyst, like a sports analyst. Like I'll sit in front of the TV and yell at Stephen A. Smith or yell at John Young when he's talking or yell at, you know, whoever it, it is. And then when they're in front of you and actually telling you about yourself and about your views and how they're wrong, oh, completely different scenario. I, I lost every argument that I thought <laughs> It just was gone. Yeah. I, looked, I looked at John and I was like, yes, sir. I believe everything you say. And I will. Yes, that is not my, 
Yeah. Yes. My favorite, my favorite was when he literally said, "Okay, you can you can believe that if you really want to, but I'm going to tell you why I'm, you're wrong." Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much. What he was he fire. Said. It was great. It was so fun. It I remember good. that. That was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he torched me. It was yeah, it was fun. Well, hold on before we go, since you have two two guys in the CrossFit world, let's have the goat debate. Who's the goat, Frazier or Froning? Three, Froning. two, one, go. Froning. <laughs> Why? That's what I said, and he killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Why Froning? Uh, how many times did you win the CrossFit Games? Four. Oh, mm -hmm. ten. Uh, with the yeah. Okay. So you count the teams. You count teams. And and the second. Oh, I count the teams. Okay. Okay. And I and I just think it's cool how how he's been able to stick around in all in of that. Time, that's right? what I said. Yes, this was the argument. This was my argument that that. Uh, young torched on me. I was like, the, the, the dude was a red shirt seminar guy. He literally taught CrossFit to people. Yeah. He's a I'm not saying Fraser is a, a chump when it comes to education, but like, been there, done that. He's everything CrossFit was supposed to be, Froning. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Time. Legacy has to be factored in. I think so too, but I gave up too early. Yeah, I, I think you messed up on the argument with with John by not including the team. Like I can see where John was coming from in pure in, in terms of like just pure domination of the sport. Um, because it, it's never been every any time like Frazier's won, it, mm. it never really was close. Um I think there was one year where Noah, Noah was ahead of him, like uh after Yeah, yeah, it was the weird. Event. It was but the then weird after year. after that, Frazier just kind of ran away with it um and then just dominated. So I can see where John's coming from in terms of like that goat aspect. But I mean, you, if you include in terms of just longevity, like you got to say it's Froning because he, he won it four times. And then just the years of dominance in the team division. And like, could you imagine if he kept going and, and just dominated the masters? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just in terms of, of long term longevity, it, it's got it's got to be Froning. And uh, I, I've, I'll admit I went immediately to Matt versus Rich. And uh, if we're taking all of them into account, it is Tia. <laughs> for, for the because for the, she's the greatest of all time. Like if it's any person to choose one person, it's probably Tia. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would push against that because the women, just, the women just aren't as competitive. Don't tell that to the women. I'll say it to the women. It's just not that competitive. Like, look at just even look at the uh, signups in terms of the men versus the women in the open in general. It's like it's not even close. Yeah, but you're also fighting against the uphill battle I'm that writing is all of this down decades and hundreds of years of every man always going for physical dominance over every other man, and then the women are like, oh, weights. They they just started like checking weights out. Right, I'd say there's quite a few women in the space, and they're all like really for it. Well, can we say that and she's destroying them, dude? Huh? Like it ain't even close. Like Tia is like destroying people. Mm -hmm. But so was Matt. Like yeah, well, Matt versus Rich, and then six, dude, and she's gonna get seven this year potentially. But like, I mean, for example, like, do we know for sure on the men's side who's gonna win the games this year? Yeah. No. Okay, and then now, do we know for sure who's going to win on the women's side this year? For her seventh year coming back after a pregnancy with a bummed out wrist as a 31-year-old? No, we don't know. Mm. Let's, but if let's it were three it years ago, the answer was yes. <laughs> but like before that, the answer would have been yes, right? What was that? Before that, the answer would have been yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's though, the point too. that I'm trying to get. Like, It takes a pregnancy and a damn wrist injury to like put – like controversy into like who's going to win the women's this year. Uh -huh. But do you think that the only reason now that you can make the argument that there is a, um, like a strong male field, like there's a lot of potential of who could be on top of the podium because there is no rich and because there is no Matt, because for all of those years, rich and Matt were the only ones that were going to win. I think so too. So nobody was really looking at other people that they even had a chance, especially when Matt came out in 16 and then has been dominant since then. Because if you have the argument that if you were talking about Tia pre-pregnancy, pre-injury, all of this type of stuff, there was no question she was going to win. Now it's in question because she did take a year off. And when it comes to the men, there's no Matt and there's no Rich. So is the men's field 
stronger now because there's no Rich and Matt? I mean, the men's field has always been strong. And, and just to even add on to like my argument, there's a reason why you haven't, we haven't seen a teenager on the men's side make it to the open division yet. Now we're starting to see an abundance of like teenage women make it into the open division for the women. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just not as competitive as the men. No, it's hormones, dude. And not, not, not exogenous either. Like chicks develop sooner. Yeah. We definitely get muscle faster. Like our bodies are done pretty much at 14, 15. And then we just keep adding muscle. Like there's a reason cursed editor is snatching 200 pounds at 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no men out there snatching 300 at 20. But I mean, like Gee, when he was in the teenage division, was snatching fucking like almost 280 as a 15 year old or whatever. Yeah, with a 10 minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yep. Uh, All right, guys, Jesus. I got to go to work. Jesus. All right. Work, work, work. Damn, just when the conversation was getting good. I know. I'm sorry, y'all. We... Y'all wanted to take it to sex and. Movies. All that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, well, that just means we have to come up on a next time. So, so we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Thanks. We'll guys. get you back. Thank you guys. Bye, I really guys. appreciate it. Thanks everybody. Oh, the boys stay on. Yeah, stay on, boys. Okay. <laughs> you know how to shut it off, right? I, I. Do you have? Click the end stream button, dude. Oh, are you guys not staying on? All the guys are like, stay on, guys. Stay on, oh. guys. <laughs> um, I was just, all right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, Later. guys. <laughs>